everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Before we get into our main topic today, I just wanted to apologize for not having a few episodes up this week. Um, ever since even before I started the show, I have been suffering from some pretty significant health issues, so uh, sometimes those do prevent me from being able to do an episode, so I did just want to apologize for that, and um, from my understanding, for the next foreseeable future, I shouldn't be having any more of these. I'm, uh, I've got some new procedures that I'm trying to undertake to correct this, so... Um, so yeah, hopefully this shouldn't interfere with me being able to do an episode, but I am trying to be as diligent as I can with updating you guys and letting you know when uh, when, and if some of these issues may arise to stop me from being able to do an episode. So I do apologize, but hopefully going to be back on track starting as of today and continuing on for the next foreseeable future. So uh, I just want to do a little bit of a recap of what's been happening over the past week, uh, week and a half or so. So the first topic I'm, I'm going to be talking about is a lot of new updates have come out about Suicide Squad. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the whole storyline that has been coming out via Latino Review, where they basically give you the entire outline of the film and how they don't give you specific details, um, with the exception of one character. But um, it does kind of talk about what the through line of the movie is going to be and all this stuff. With the exception of that one character, I, I will say this about it. With the exception of that one character uh, trait that is revealed, I should say, um, this movie sounds like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And in the hands of somebody like David Ayer, it, I, I'm definitely getting on board with this movie. I mean, I always was from the beginning. I thought it sounded really cool. Um, but I'm getting more and more excited about this this is really sounding like it's going to be a cool film the one thing though that i could not get from that description maybe it's just my interpretation of it maybe it was described very well i just didn't interpret it this way but it didn't come across that they were all going to be villains um they, they it all seemed like they were going to be guys on the wrong side of the tracks um that's just what i took from it but it might play out differently and i hope it does i hope we actually do get to see villains um with Possibly some redeeming qualities, maybe things that you like. Like, I mean, look at how Alan Rickman played Hans Gruber in Die Hard. Die, he was a villain. He was one of the best on-screen villains that we've seen. But he was also somebody that you rooted for. You got behind him in, in a sense. You, you almost wanted him to win, but you also wanted John McClane to take him down. And I feel that they could approach these characters like that. And I hope that they do, because that to me is the good sign of a villain. It's a villain that... Everybody can get behind, whether it be it's really well written or it's very well acted. We have great talent behind these characters, so if they're really well written, I think we're going to get something very special with it. Um, but it, you know, updating basically what's happened, I've already talked about Tom Hardy dropping out of the, the film. It was rumored that it was about scheduling issues and stuff like that, but after reading the supposed breakdown uh, of the movie, I can understand why he would not want to be the character of Rick Flagg. The one thing I will say about this is that it looks like Rick Flagg is no longer going to be the leader of the movie, because originally it was stated that Tom Hardy would play Rick Flagg, who was going to be the leader of the group, and um, he and Deadshot were basically going to be vying for the lead in the group of sorts, and it was going to be kind of head-to-head -head between Will Smith and Tom Hardy. Well, it looks like based on recent rewrites that Rick Flagg's character has been, his screen time at least has been reduced a little bit, um, making Deadshot more of a central character in the film, which makes sense, especially considering that it's Will Smith playing Deadshot. He rarely, if ever, will do a movie where he's not the lead, um, with the exception of Winter's Tale, which, again, we won't talk about. His performance in that movie was abysmal. Um, but basically what happens with that character, I can see why Tom Hardy would not want to be a part of it, because he might not only be holding out for a larger role, one that could potentially lead to future films or be included in more movies. Rick Flagg is not really a known character, and I don't know if they are setting this character up to be anything outside of a Suicide Squad series of films. So um, I, I can see why he would have passed on that, but Jake Gyllenhaal, who was rumored to be his replacement, has now since passed on the film. Two more replacement actors have been named as potential replacements. Now, Nothing has been confirmed by Warner Brothers or DC that these guys are even in talks, but it looks as though both John Berthnall from such movies as Fury and uh, Wolf of Wall Street, he's also uh, from The Walking Dead, and um, Joel Edgerton. Out of these two, 
Well, I think that Joel Edgerton personally visibly fits the role. I think you could see him more in that role. I think he has a little bit more nuance. I think John Berthnall, depending on how they're going to adapt the character, I think John Berthnall can bring that type of intensity that this role is going to require. Um, they're both phenomenal actors. And if you haven't seen Fury, I mean, John Berthnall in that movie, he he's one of the lower supporting characters in the movie. Out of the five, he probably has, I think he and Michael Pena have the least screen time out of the five. But they all have a really great camaraderie between them. And you can really see how he can work in an ensemble, how he can work with other people, how he has that kind of manic sense to him, which is something that I definitely think he could bring to this role. Um, and he's also worked with David Ayer. So, I mean, there's all these things that work well together. Joel Edgerton, while I didn't hate Exodus, <clears throat> excuse me, while I didn't hate Exodus, I thought that he actually played a very convincing Ramsey, um, or Ramses, I should say. So... They're both talented actors. I would be on board with either of them. Seeing them in the role, I can see Joel Edgerton more so in the role. Just just his physicality, his his look of the character, I think fits. But John Berthnall, I think, could really bring that intensity. So either of them I'd be really happy with. Um, if these guys both drop off, I mean, I think they've now realized because of the rewrite that they can't go after an A-list actor now. Um, because an A-list actor is not going to want this role. It's it's not big enough. It's not meaty enough. It doesn't have that character development. Unless they say that this character is going to be prevalent in future films. And whether or not that ends up happening will determine the type of, of actor that they can get. Whether or not it's A-list, B-list, or anything like that. And that's not going against their talent. It just means their status in Hollywood. Whether or not they are they're able to bypass the audition stage where they're able to just get offers. Now, these guys most likely went in and read for the role and now are the top choices. That could very well be the case. We still don't know. We're all on the outside of this. It's all just kind of speculation. So I'd be happy with both of these guys, but filming doesn't even begin until April. So they still have a while to go. Um, I would have been happy, I think, out of all of them, I would have been most happy with Jake Gyllenhaal. I think that, especially seeing him coming off of Nightcrawler and what he's about to do in Southpaw, this this guy is a force of nature when it comes to acting. I mean, the fact that he wasn't even nominated, I, I, I talked about that on my Academy Award nominations video, but the fact that he wasn't even nominated for his role in Nightcrawler to me is, is a real shame. But the movie doesn't start filming until April. Um, it doesn't, it, like... They still got time to find a guy. They still have time to find one. Um, it would be troublesome if we started to hear that, you know, either Marco Robbie or Jared Leto or Will Smith or Jai Courtney or any of the others that have already signed on are dropping off the film. That is when you get worrisome. But when you're dealing with somebody who signed on to a role and then the character was rewritten, that then changes things. So it, it's not necessarily that he, he was unhappy with the script. He could have just been unhappy with the direction that the character was going based on what he had signed on originally to do. So that's most likely the reason why Tom Hardy dropped off in the end. I, I think we have to take a, an amalgamation of all the bits of information that we've been given. But, um, yeah, Suicide Squad's going to be coming out next August, man. This movie's going to be really, really fun. Um, I, well, I still think it is going to be a serious film. I think it's going to be very entertaining. Um, so I'm on board with it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, if you like either of these two guys here for the role, or if not, who would you like to see personally in that role? Who do you think could work, um, with this ensemble, with these character traits and all this kind of stuff? So I definitely want to hear your guys' comments. Put a comment in the comment section below. But when we do get more information about this movie, I will definitely update you guys on here. Even though Aquaman coming out in DC's upcoming cinematic universe isn't coming out until 2018, they're still searching for a director. Um, it's still ways away. Like, we're only at the beginning of 2015. They don't have to start filming this movie until 2017. So they still have over two years. But they would like... I, I know that they're approaching the end of their scripting phase. They, are, they have two scripts that are about to come in within the next month. Um, and so the search for the director continues. Now, it's been rumored that Mike Nichols is being looked at as a director, a potential director for Aquaman. Well, I believe that he would be good in terms of the character. I don't know how he would fare with a large budget uh, feature film, like a big budget special effects extravaganza. And everything that we're hearing about this movie so far, they are approaching this movie as a very large scale movie. Um, 
I've heard, uh, based on the Latino Review article that I read, and a couple of others that I've read online as well, they are approaching this as almost an Avatar-style world-building film. This is going to be a massive, massive film. Um, on top of that, you have Jason Momoa playing the title character. The, Aquaman is going to curb people's expectations so much. I'm really excited for this movie. They are basing it off of the new 52 version of the character. Whether or not he has both his hands, I don't know. If he still has the hook hand, or if he ends up having the hook hand, which would be cool by the end of the film. I think that could really work. Um, anybody out there who watches any of the DC animated stuff, they just had a new one come out called Throne of Atlantis. And while I didn't care for the overall film altogether, there were some sequences in there involving the Atlanteans, which were unbelievably cool. Like, um, I think it was... Was it actually... Uh, Arthur's mother. I can't remember the actual character who did it, but they came up. The, it looked a little bit silly at first, where she was in like this giant water tornado and standing at the top of it. But then what she did was she got all all these water drops. Like she just spun around, got all these water drops to come out. And they turned into like ice arrows and shot them at everybody. And then they all stuck into everybody. And then she had like water blades come out of her arms and was swiping around, cutting people in half and all this stuff. Like it was really really cool. And while staying away from gore. If they can bring that level of intensity to some of these fight sequences, this is going to be a movie that we haven't seen before. We haven't seen things like this. Like, they're going to be approaching this movie in a very unique way and making it a large scale. I think they're going almost 200, if not higher, million dollar budget. They're going all out with this movie, and I really think they have a great take on it. Um, we are going to be introduced to the character in Batman v Superman. How big of a role that is is still to be questioned. I don't think it's going to be very large. I think it's going to be a very, very minimal uh, appearance. But bringing him into that and then also including him in the first Justice League movie, which is going to be coming out before this, we're in for a treat and a half, I think, when it comes to Aquaman. Now, some comments that have come out by Jason Momoa have stated that it's a classic origin story. Having him in two films and then doing an origin story, I don't see what that serves. Unless you take part of the movie and have that be an origin story. Maybe even told through flashbacks or anything like that. I, I don't know how they're going to approach it, but having an origin story after we've already established the character to a certain extent, I, that to me is almost a wasted opportunity. You could just further the stories while still telling the origins in flashbacks, or maybe that's prevalent to the new story that they're telling. But um, having them come in... And, and doing this type of movie, I, I think sounds really cool. Mike Nichols, on the other hand, I don't know if he's the right choice for the type of movie that they're going for. Which the new director that's being rumored to be attached, or at least in talks for the movie, has me a little bit more excited. Noam Moreau. Noam Moreau was the man who directed 300 Rise of an Empire. So not only does he have a working relationship with Zack Snyder, um, who's directing Batman v Superman and the Justice League movie, but... He has a handle on large-scale effects-driven films uh, with big action set pieces, especially dealing with a lot of water and, and dealing with a lot of production um, uh, production troubles dealing with water. Because anybody who's worked on a film set knows you, you don't shoot... There's two things you don't do. You don't shoot with water and you don't shoot with snow. One of the reasons are is because they're almost impossible to predict. You can't get the right lighting on them. You can't control them or anything like that. It's very difficult to do so. That's why a lot of movies that film in the snow are filmed on sound stages with controlled environments. Same with rain and all this kind of stuff. They're filmed on controlled environments. But they're still very difficult to navigate the whole production process while still maintaining that visual cue. So to me, getting somebody who's already experienced with that is somebody who's delivered me personally felt that it was a very entertaining film. I felt that it could have had probably about 10 or 15 minutes shaved off of it, but I feel that he would be a really good choice. Um, there are other directors I think out there that would be better, but that's usually always the case. It's always going to depend on what their vision of the movie is. Cause I mean, you look at somebody like, uh, even just as a, a writer's point of view, look at somebody like Akiva Goldsman. Akiva Goldsman is the Academy Award winning writer of a beautiful mind. He is also the guy who uh, wrote and directed Winter's Tale, which was awful. Um, he wrote Batman and Robin. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, the guy has one of the most spotty track records out there. So, I mean, it you can have somebody out there who has a, a not the greatest track record in the world, but they might know this world. They might have the greatest take on this property and know how to execute it. 
And this could be the case with No Moreau. And I, I think it could work. I did enjoy 300 Rise of an Empire. It didn't hold a candle to, the, to 300. But having Zack Snyder, the director of 300, directing Jason Momoa in Batman v Superman and in Justice League Part 1, then sieging into um, his kind of understudy with directing Aquaman, I, I think it works. I think there's a through line through it that, that can really make a lot of sense. I think it can... Uh, he can really bring a cool visual style to this movie. I think he can handle the action sequences because the action sequences were actually really well done in 300 Rise of an Empire. But it's all going to determine the character development and what he is able to do with that. Because at the end of the day, action means absolutely nothing if you don't at least have some sort of care for the actors. Perfect example, look at Transformers 4. I mean, that movie, at least in the other Transformers movies, you had a slight connection to some of the actors. You you knew the character of Sam Witwicky throughout the films. As much as you hated the second and third one, I know that I hated the second one. I, I, I liked the third one. I thought the third one was actually, it redeemed itself a little bit. More importantly, though, was because we got to know the characters. We had more more development on them than we normally would have. It still wasn't great because Michael Bay doesn't really care about characters all that much. He cares about flashy shots and, and he's just got the shot composition in his head. But then you look at Transformers 4 and there was not one single redeeming quality about any of the characters. You, you couldn't, none of them made sense. They, di they didn't seem like real people. Like at least in Transformers 1 through 3, they seemed at least a little bit like real people. Even John Turturro, even though he went a little bit extreme in the second one, he kind of dialed it back a little bit in the third one. Um, but he, they felt like real people in a sense. So being able to do that while still bringing these amazing set pieces and, and action sequences, I think it could really work. And I think No Moro is one of the guys to do it. Whether or not he ends up being the guy to actually star or to actually direct in this movie is another story. One of the other really cool parts about this movie too is there's suggestion that Carl Urban could be being linked to the villain role, or at least an unspecified role. I think a lot of people are assuming that he's going to be the villain. Um, I'd be so on board with that. I think Carl Urban brings a lot of charisma to each role that he does, especially like looking at his character of Bones versus looking at him... <clears throat> in the Lord of the Rings movies, and then you look at him in a movie like Pathfinder, even though I didn't really care for Pathfinder all that much, I thought he brought a lot to the role. Um, you know, Dread. I mean, you can't talk about Carl Urban and not mention Dread. I mean, you, you can only see this section of his face through the entire film, yet he brought so much to that character. So I think that it would be a really great uh, choice for him to be joining this movie, especially going head-to-head -head with Jason Momoa. I think he could, he could at least stand a chance. I mean, Carl Urban can get big he can get bulked up so having him go against jason momoa i think would be really cool but we don't really have any other concrete information about this film as of yet outside of the fact that it will be opening up on july 27th 2018 and jason momoa will be the one to don the trident um we don't really know a whole bunch of story details and i i really do hope that it's not an origin story but we're going to get more information as this movie starts rolling closer to, to the start of production but let me know what you guys think about the choice of director do you think no moreau could be uh, a decent director, you think he's a good choice, or who would you like to see direct this movie? Who do you think could make a really good interpretation of the Aquaman character? Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and if we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. The first images from Alejandro Inarritu's new movie, The Revenant, have come online. Now, for those of you who don't know who Inaritu is, he is the man who currently uh, directed Birdman. He's also directed such films as 21 Grams. Um, but this guy takes a completely unique approach to directing films, especially after the success of Birdman. Now, with Birdman, he attempted to make a movie from the beginning to the end that felt like it was one continuous shot. And he succeeded in that. And for those of you who haven't seen Birdman, you need to stop what you're doing, pause this video, and go and watch Birdman because that movie is utterly incredible. I, it is a divisive movie. It is a movie that most people will either love or they will hate. But <clears throat> I personally, it, it hit all cylinders with me. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, it just... Everything about it was just absolutely incredible, and I could not wait to see what he was going to do next. And now, not only was the storyline of The Revenant just sounding really, really, really cool, but on top of that, we now have new details about his filming style of the movie. So, to give you a breakdown of the film, The Revenant stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, Will Poulter, and Domhnall Gleeson as uh, their frontiersmen and bear trappers and fur trappers at the uh, turn of the century, 1800. So... 
what ends up happening is during one of their little excavations or, or, or fur trappings, um, they're attacked by a bear and Leonardo DiCaprio is the one who actually gets attacked. And they feel that, you know, he's a goner, he's going to die. So they abandon him and they take all their trappings and everything and they just leave him to die. But he doesn't end up dying. Uh, he ends up through some magical way, he ends up surviving. And the remainder of the film is a is a 200 mile trek uh, for him to hunt these guys down and seek revenge for leaving him to die. Um, that on its own sounds incredible. Leonardo DiCaprio on a revenge tale against Tom Hardy. Like that is going to be really cool. This is also one of the rumors as to why Tom Hardy dropped out of Suicide Squad. I don't think that that was actually true, but now getting more information, like it, it, there's at least a little bit of a little bit of possibility that this could have been one of the reasons saying like, you know, is that maybe the proverbial straw, the one reason that said, you know what? Okay. I'm not going to do it because Inaritu is shooting this movie with only natural light. So he's only shooting it for a few hours a day, which means that they had to push the filming schedule. It'll have to go into late March, early April now, um, which is one of the reasons why he supposedly had to drop out of suicide squad. But not only that, they're shooting it in the isolated, desolate, uh, desolate locations in Calgary, um, or in, in outside of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And these are areas that are untouched by man. There is not, from my understanding, there's not going to be any digital um, replacements for any of the backdrops. They are all going to be natural. As you can see just from the image, this is the first image here of what... Um, of what Leonardo DiCaprio will look like in the movie. And he looks really rough. He's got, you know, very dirty bearded, all that kind of stuff. He's holding a really cool looking gun. But it, the intensity in his eyes, I mean, you always know that Leonardo DiCaprio is going to bring his A game to every role. Working with Inaritu with this type of a concept and this type of a rigorous shooting schedule in the frigid cold where it's, they called it nine degrees, which is, that's Fahrenheit. So what would that be in Celsius? Because I'm from Canada, so we don't deal with Fahrenheit. Our freezing point is not 32 degrees. It's zero. So... I, minus nine or nine degrees Fahrenheit, so thirty-two probably be about minus twelve, minus thirteen degrees, uh, maybe a little bit colder than that. Um, but they're shooting outside, like these guys. They're going all winter like this. Like this is extreme. This movie is going to be a whole new type of thing that we haven't seen yet. Um, just in a visual standpoint, the storyline. Obviously, we've seen stories like this before, but. The visual aspect of it, the way that he's approaching it, and not only that, he has Emmanuel Lubezki, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the um, cinematographer for Gravity and for Birdman, uh, he's got him back. So we know it's going to look absolutely beautiful. On top of that, he's got these rigorous shooting, uh, um, not contingents, uh, why can't I think of the word, uh, basically contracts, uh, uh, obligations. You know, he has a certain way that he wants to shoot the movie. And he's doing it, and he now has the clout to say, I'm doing this movie like this. Like He's been trying to work on this movie for the past four years or so, I think since 2011 or 2010. Um, he's been trying to get this movie going, so I am definitely on board with this. Going after Tom Hardy, Don Mel Gleason, and Will Poulter, I mean, this is going to be a really cool, really interesting movie. I'm really on board with this. Seeing Leo getting out of his comfort zone, because he, he usually always plays guys who are very, very troubled, all, all these internal demons... Now he's, he's really starting to have a little bit more fun with his roles. I mean, just look at Django Unchained and look at Wolf of Wall Street. Even though Wolf of Wall Street, he really was a guy who was very internally conflicted, but he bathed in excess. And that was really cool to see Leonardo DiCaprio play that type of a role. Seeing this, when he's going to be, it's, he's going after revenge? Like he's just going and hunting these guys down? Oh man, I'm on board. Sign me up. Um, as it stands right now, this movie is scheduled for a limited release on Christmas Day. It will be opening up, I believe, on January 8th everywhere, either January 7th or 8th everywhere. Um, but yeah, this is definitely going after the Academy Award. Um, I am definitely on board with this. Okay, so get get this. At, by the end of 2015, we're not only going to have this movie set in the 18, early 1800s, we're also going to be having The Hateful Eight, Quentin Tarantino's next movie, The Hateful Eight, coming out in November. Um, he is planning on showing that movie at TIFF in September. So the first showings will be available in September and then it'll launch everywhere in, I think the, either the end of October or November. Um, but getting two movies like this from amazingly talented directors with unbelievable cast, great stories behind them. This could be the time when we may see a resurgence of the Western, um, where we really start to see Hollywood start to pump out more Western films. It, it could be, um, cause 
I think Hollywood is starting to notice that the next four or five years are playing with superhero movies. I don't know how likely we are to get all the the, the same quantity and the same consistency of uh, superhero films after 2020. I don't think that the general movie going audience is really going to be that excited for, you know, Avengers five. So they, they might be, I don't know. I can't see that far ahead in the future, but just to me, the, the sheer amount, like 40 some odd superhero films coming out. I think Hollywood needs to now try to find something else that they can really try to focus on. Um, and bringing back the Westerns, I think could work as long as you do proper stories. That's the main thing. You got to get people hooked. If you get them hooked, and you get them invested in the characters, then you don't need a special effects extravaganza. You just need a really well-told story, very well-directed, um, and something that's just really nice to look at with an engaging story. That's the main criteria. And if they can bring back Westerns, I think that'd be really cool, especially in the hands of guys like this. So as it stands right now, it is uh, scheduled for a limited release on Christmas Day with a wide release sometime uh, early January 2016. When we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll do it for part one of this episode of Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click the subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And go ahead and give us a like on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you guys ever have a topic, question, or comment you would like to have discussed on the show, you can go ahead and put a comment in our comment section, or you can email us at movienewswithnicholson at gmail.com. And on every Friday episode, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Stay tuned later on today for part two of this episode. But until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.